How do you recommend studying for comprehension? Well, with section one, in terms of studying for section one, I would just be going over samples of each text type, first of all. So I wouldn't be just sitting down and doing a full paper straight away. I would be saying to myself, what are the four types of questions I could get? Well, the first one is visual, okay? Now visual might not even be in an advanced paper. It might not even be in a standard paper. Um, I wouldn't spend as much time on that as I would with the other ones, but let's say you look at visual, I would make sure that I know three to five go-to techniques for any visual text. And then I would practice doing one or two different questions on a visual text. So I do a, a, a bit of practice on the same text type before moving on to the next one. Then I move on to poetry and I brainstorm all of the techniques that I can think of. I look up other ones, use the general resources, use the YouTube videos to figure out what those go-to techniques are like MEST. MEST is best. You guys can look up section one techniques on the videos if you need help going over techniques, but you wanna be really familiar with the possible techniques that could appear in a particular text. And then you wanna practice doing a couple of those text with a question and then you move on and you do the other ones so visual poetry prose fiction extracts non-fiction extracts make sure you look at each of those individually brainstorm all of the techniques that you can think of that could come up and then practice a couple of questions for each i would also make sure you guys are doing when you do let's say you're doing two practice questions for each text type I would do one, let's say four marker, because that practice is doing, uh, that allows you to practice doing a one paragraph answer where you have a topic sentence followed by three pieces of analysis. So I would practice a four marker instead of a three so that it forces you to spot another technique. That's just better practice. And then I would practice doing a six slash seven marker for each of them, okay? You need to be really sharp with those longer responses, okay? And that's a mini essay structure. If you get a six or seven marker, you, know, you need to have two body paragraphs in there. Often you're going to be comparing two different texts as well. So you need to be really fast and efficient with your analysis there. So practice doing a six or seven marker for each of those texts. And you can often practice pairing them together and doing a comparison question. For a classic three to four mark comprehension, should you address the question straight away in the first sentence? Yes, definitely. The whole point about section one is that you need to be concise and efficient. So you wanna be answering the question straight away. The spot that students get confused about is they think that repeating the words of the question is enough. So in their first sentence for a three or four marker, they'll basically just repeat what the question said or they'll use a synonym. That's not enough. That's not going to get you the mark for that sentence. So make sure that when you get a key word in the question, let's say that it's anomalies, make sure that you ask yourself what type of anomaly is relevant to this text. And if you can then explain what type of anomaly it is or who is the anomaly, why are they the anomaly, how are they the anomaly? So what that they're an anomaly? What does that mean? If you can ask yourself those mini questions, what slash what type, how, why, who, so what? If you can always just have those questions that you ask yourself about the key terms of the question, it's going to allow you to say something more specific, more insightful, more meaningful, rather than just repeating the words of the question. So if you said, the emotional anomaly of sadness is explored in the text, that's much better than just saying the text explores an anomaly, you see? So if you can say the type of the anomaly, who the anomaly is or what the anomaly is and why, uh, then that's going to allow you to actually say something insightful straight away. That should be in the first sentence. So for unseen short answers, do the markers care if I use more basic techniques? It's a good question. Guys, for your section one, it doesn't matter about the sophistication of the techniques. So whether you're analyzing a visual text, a poem, a prose fiction extract, it doesn't actually matter which type of technique you see as long as it's a valid one. Because with comprehension, with section one, with that reading task, all that matters is that you're able to identify a technique that's valid and connect it to the question. So you're actually able to say something meaningful that relates to the key term of the question. Okay, so it doesn't matter about the sophistication of the techniques. I would just recommend not repeating the same technique in the same answer, of course. So if you're doing a four marker and you're, you're coming up with three pieces of evidence, three different techniques, that's all you really need for a four marker. You can just do one topic sentence followed by three pieces of analysis. Just make sure that none of those three techniques are the same. But yes, if you do metaphor, similes, whatever, it doesn't matter for section one. It's all about how you explain its effect and make sure that you're using at least one of the key terms from the question 
when you're explaining the effect of that technique. Advice on how to avoid repeating ideas in short answer. Okay, so to avoid repeating yourself in a short answer question, ask yourself different mini questions about the key term. For instance, say you got the word, uh, say you got the key term anomaly. I'm gonna go back to that example, right? If, if you say something about an anomaly, you can straight away say, you know, who is the anomaly? How are they an anomaly? So what that they're an anomaly? What, what's the impact of them being an anomaly? Okay, so just like that in that breakdown, that actually allows you to focus on different things so that you're not repeating the same point. So when you pick your evidence, focus on things that are to do with different aspects of being an anomaly, like what type of anomaly are they? Okay, what does it feel like to be an anomaly? What does, what does it mean for others that you're an anomaly? Okay, how do you overcome being an anomaly? So it's all, all of those questions kind of lead you to different types of answers and ideas, which help you avoid repeating yourself. So hopefully that makes sense. You kind of think about those little mini questions like who, what type, so what, you know, and then other questions, you can come up with lots of other little questions that help you kind of branch off and don't you so that you're not just making the same point three times in a three marker or a four marker.